Welcome to the Living Unconventionally podcast. I'm Brittany Felix, and every Monday I'll be speaking with someone that realized a traditional life with a soul-sucking 9-to-5 job just wasn't for them. They had the courage to go against what society told them they should want, and now they chase their passions all over the world. We'll discuss their unconventional journey and their exciting and sometimes terrifying travels. Every Wednesday we'll continue that conversation by talking about just how they can afford to travel so often and live a life of freedom most people only ever dream of. Every Friday, I'll answer your questions and offer advice and encouragement to help you start living unconventionally. If you allow yourself to be inspired by my amazing guest, one day I may just be featuring you in your world travels. Welcome to episode 123. Today, I am going to be talking about the experience of being with someone who doesn't necessarily have your same passion and desire for travel. I've had this come up in the Facebook community a little bit, as well as just interacting with other fellow travelers, and it can sometimes be a bit of an issue for people who want to travel full-time, they want to be a digital nomad, but their significant other just isn't quite on board. You know, maybe they have a job that they absolutely love, that keeps them in one location. Maybe they're just not really into travel. You know, it it can be stressful. It can. And you can be on edge and kind of uncomfortable. And it can be a negative experience for a lot of people. Now, this may mean that you need to have a serious look at your relationship. If being a full-time traveler, being a digital nomad, being a citizen of the world is that important to you and the other person just simply refuses, you have to decide whether or not you want to compromise or whether you want to be the person that you feel you truly need to be. And that may mean leaving that relationship. Sometimes that's the only option. If being with a person is going to make you feel stifled, make you feel like you are not free to be who you truly are, if you're going to be unhappy in the relationship, if you're going to have resentment towards the person for making you stay when you really want to go, those are things you have to decide for yourself. You have to really look within and evaluate how you feel and how important the relationship is to you. So moving beyond that, let's say that you decide the person you are with is worth the compromise and the relationship that you have is worth coming up with a solution that works for both of you which is the situation that I am in. I haven't really talked about it a whole lot. I've mentioned it here and there, and I've talked about it in the Facebook group with some people who have asked me about it directly. Obviously, our road trip did not last the full year that it was supposed to, and this was not my decision. Certainly, it was stressful. I had my frustrations. It is so much easier to work in an apartment with a stable Wi-Fi connection. I cannot deny that whatsoever. I can't even deny that there is a part of me that likes being comfortable in the situation that we're in now. Having a full kitchen, having an actual bedroom, having a bathroom where I don't have to feel like I'm packed in like a sardine. Certainly those things are great. But had it not been for my husband, I absolutely would not be in this apartment right now. I would be either still in the RV, although really more realistically, I would be traveling full-time probably somewhere around the world. I would be in Bali or Guatemala or somewhere. Now, my husband and I have been together for, actually, this Valentine's Day will be 10 years, and he is my best friend. There's no way around that. He frustrates me more than anyone else in the entire world. He can get under my skin like anyone else can except for my mother, and he can also hurt my feelings more than anyone else is capable of. But he also can make me feel better when no one else can. His little giggle whenever I make him laugh lights up my day. And whenever I have good news or bad news, he is the first person that I want to go run and tell. So for me, it was never a choice of do I stay with him or do I leave? There's no choice there to be made. There just isn't. He is my partner. So that looks for me like coming up with a compromise. The compromise was on his part, doing the RV trip in the first place and really giving it a shot, which I'll admit, and I think even he would, he did not in the beginning. For about the first month or so of the trip, he was miserable. He was having a difficult time adjusting to freedom, 
really. But something clicked. We kind of eventually started getting on the same page and he started to relax more and enjoy it more and really, really gave it a true shot. I can tell when he's half-assing something and when he's putting his all into it. And he really, really tried to make the RV lifestyle work for him. But it's just not his personality. It's just not who he is. The same way that I cannot be forced to be happy working in a cubicle is the same way that he cannot be forced to be happy living an unstable lifestyle. So we decided to settle down in Colorado Springs, which is a city that we both love. It was a great compromise. He can have the stability here that he wants of knowing exactly where he's going to lay his head every night. And he has gone back into the corporate world. He actually really, really enjoys his job. He has a steady paycheck. So all of those things are very important to him. And he is a lot more comfortable now. But the city still offers adventure for me, and I can still go out and do things and explore and see new sites, which is fine for now. That's great. And, you know, we are exploring the city still. We're learning new things about it all the time. I've actually started a second podcast specifically about this city so that I can really get to know it. But eventually, it's not going to be enough for me. Eventually, I'm going to need more. I'm going to need more adventure, more spontaneity more uncomfortable situations. And travel checks all of those boxes for me, as I'm sure it does for you. I really thrive when I'm being challenged. And travel is certainly challenging if you let it be. Obviously, you can go and take these retreats and have everything planned for you exactly and have your itinerary set up for you and you just go where you're told to go when you're told to go there. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's how you feel comfortable traveling. Absolutely not. But then there are some of us crazy people who like to have a little bit of that uncertainty and like to know that when those challenges arise, we can solve them. We can persevere through them because we've experienced challenge before. So in the future, our travel plans are basically going to be us taking mutual vacations together when he has time off work. His company that he started with since we've been here in Colorado Springs actually starts him off with three weeks of vacation a year, which is fantastic. The company he was at before, he was there for four years and only had two weeks. So, you know, that's great. Three weeks is doable. We can make something happen with that. But once I get to the point where I'm making enough money, three weeks of vacation is not going to be enough for me. So that's going to translate into me taking solo trips or trips with my girlfriends. Now, they're not going to be three-month-long trips. I wouldn't want to be away from him for that long. It would take away from the enjoyment of the experience. And I wouldn't want to be away from my dogs that long either. I am too attached to them. But it is going to look like, you know, maybe one, two, three-week trips, maybe even up to a month, although I I tend to doubt it, but certainly in the one- to three-week range. And so how I kind of see this playing out is, you know, maybe he and I take a vacation together. We head off somewhere. He uses up a week of his vacation time. He flies back home and then I stay wherever we're at. And I really have that time to explore not only the area that we're in, but myself. I think solo travel lets you get to know yourself and trust yourself in a way that nothing else can. When you're in a foreign country, you're in uncomfortable situations, you're in places where you don't know the language, and you literally have no one to rely on but yourself. That is such a powerful thing. Now, prior to a few weeks ago, actually, I wasn't even sure about all this. I hadn't even really kind of thought all this through. I'd kind of just been throwing myself into work and into this podcast and and really just kind of putting all of that on the back burner until I had a conversation with a former guest of the show, actually, Kathleen Ventura. She and I have stayed in contact. She is a business coach for women, and she sometimes does these kind of group coaching calls for people in her Facebook group, and, and you know, they're generally free. She provides so much free support. It's amazing. But I was on one of these group coaching calls, and she really just kind of called me on my shit and made me face this situation. But she also helped me realize that this is a possibility. Just because I am married does not mean that I absolutely have to travel with my husband. There are other options, and I don't know why that's never occurred to me before. I just kind of assumed, like, ooh, if we don't travel together, what does that mean? 
And that's so stupid because no one can define our relationship but us. So if we're comfortable with the situation, it doesn't have to mean anything. And the more I started to think about this new path, the more excited I became for the reasons that I just mentioned. I am excited and scared, which makes me more excited about the possibility of taking these solo trips. And it will really give me a chance to reconnect if I can take trips with my girlfriends. You know, I don't get to see them nearly enough, especially now that I'm living, you know, halfway across the country from most of them. So I think actually this whole compromise situation may end up being a blessing in disguise because I'm not going to be forcing my husband into a situation that he is uncomfortable with by traveling long term in these foreign countries, which inevitably just ends up with us arguing because he is not getting what he needs out of the relationship and out of life. When I am forcing him to be uncomfortable all the time, which he is not okay with, he doesn't thrive on that like I do. It's not fair to him, and it's very, very selfish of me. So now we can both get what we want, and like I said, this will be a blessing in disguise. Because now we know ourselves better, we have more open communication in our own relationship, and we're both going to be getting what we need. So while I call it a compromise, it's not necessarily because I get to have my wonderful relationship with my best friend and I also get to travel. So my advice for you if you're going through something similar is to look for the ways to rethink things and not worry about what everything means. Just have open communication with the person that you're with and figure out what you're both comfortable with and what you both need to get out of the relationship and how you can both get those things. Because when one person is getting what they want out of a relationship but the other's not, there's an imbalance and a relationship cannot survive if there is that big of an imbalance. You both have to be fulfilled. So again, look for those ways to find fulfillment for the both of you. And you're not going to be able to do that until you're both very honest with yourself and with each other. So before you talk to your spouse, you need to have a talk with yourself and figure out what it is that you truly need in order to feel fulfilled. Once you figure that out, you can then communicate that with your partner and find a way for both of you to get what you need. If you have any tips for how you've handled this situation yourself, if you have been in it, I would love if you would post those in the Living Unconventionally Facebook community. If you are not a part of that community already, It's super easy to join. All you have to do is go to livinguncontentionally.com forward slash Facebook, and that'll take you right to the group where you can ask to join. So that's going to wrap it up for today. I just wanted to share my thoughts on that and really get open and honest with you guys about how this has affected my own life and how we are choosing to handle this situation. I want to invite you to come back on Monday where I'm going to have Sarah Williams on the podcast. Sarah is amazing. She is definitely an adventure seeker. She actually has her own podcast called Tough Girl Challenges, which is awesome. And we're going to talk about Sarah's journey, including the time she participated in a marathon in the Sahara Desert in what the Discovery Channel calls the toughest foot race on earth. So let me tell you, Sarah is badass, and you're not going to want to miss this episode because she's also a truly great person as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you around the Facebook community, and I also hope that you have a fantastic weekend. 